Hey! I'm trying to solve a mystery. Um, um you are surely well educated. Will you be able to tell me the connections between Heart Darkness and Susan Cain? Of course! It's obvious both works utilize typological postfiguration of Dante's Inferno. As Dante moves through levels of hell, so does Marlowe, from outer station to inner station. Marlowe's perception of Kurtz becomes more detailed at each station, as he encounters further acts of cruelty and savagery. Finally, meeting Kurtz at the center is analogous to meeting Satan, a shadow, unrestrained. Likewise, in Citizen Kane, Mr. Thompson's interviews gradually reveal Kane's inner sufferings. The butler, last to be interviewed, accounts the darkest, most private portrayal, similar to the way the inner station reveals the evil of Kurtz's domination. Orson Welles continually uses positioning of characters in a scene to mimic the three levels from the three stations in Heart of Darkness. Hello, Jedediah. Too old to call me Mr. Thatcher, Charles. You're too old to be called anything else. Now that it's valuable, and if Fred Graves had any idea all this was going to happen, he'd have made out those certificates in both our names. Get the boys out of the floor. Play the ball right in the mask. The journey through the two works ends as it begins, with Marlowe and his crew, or the Gates of Xanadu. The cyclic structure emphasizes man's continual reversion back to ignorance. Yes. But what? Excuse me? I was, a, I was about to say before I was really interrupted. Both Citizen Kane and Heart of Darkness have various levels of narration, allowing us to examine Kurtz and Kane through different perspectives. Though Heart of Darkness begins with a narrator, most of the story is told through Marlowe and through the characters he meets. In a similar fashion, Citizen Kane begins with impersonal news reports which then progresses into Thompson's interviews filled with flashbacks of memories. What was she like? She was like all the girls I knew in dancing school. Very nice girl, very nice. Emily was a little nicer. <clears throat> well, after the first couple of months, she and Charlie didn't see much of each other except at breakfast. It was a marriage just like any other marriage. Such levels enforce uncertainty surrounding the character's true nature, because we never know how reliable the people's memories are. On one hand, the Harlequin views Kurtz as an enlightened, yet a visitor at the end says Kurtz was a politician. It seemed both Kurtz and Kane were created by others' expectations. Beyond the structure, is there more? Uh, mm, leave me, I need to finish my book. Well, thank you. Kurtz and Kane, two different stories. What is the connection between them? Theirs is a story of rags to riches to rags. People that knew them knew nothing. They were surrounded by everything, but had nothing at all. Both lost their higher morality, and both were lost to the darkness within. What does it all mean? Both Kurtz and Kane started off the same. They were poor and created wealth. Kurtz through his ivory trade and Kane through his papers. At first they worked for the people's benefit. Each was worshipped in his own surroundings. Their eloquent mannerisms naturally drew others to them, but they changed. In what way? Each man wanted acceptance. Cain once said he wanted it on his own terms. Neither actually got it that way. Their desire for acceptance forced an attempt to obtain it, which manifested itself in the form of fame and wealth. These they gained, sure, but true acceptance they could not. Both Cain and Kurtz had the opportunity to find it, 
Yet Kurtz was drawn back to the heart of Africa, failing to deliver the ivory personally to the manager. And Kane was disrupted from his search for childhood by Susan Alexander, his second wife. How about his second wife? Susan Alexander? <laughs> well, that first night, according to Charlie, all she had was a toothache. You want to know what I was going to do tonight before I ruined my best Sunday clothes? I was on my way to the Western Manhattan warehouse in search of my youth. You see, my mother died a long time ago, and her things were put in storage out west. There wasn't any other place to put them. I thought I'd send for them now, and tonight I was going to take a look at them. You know, a sort of sentimental journey. As a result, Kane's own principles, published in the papers, destroyed. Declaration of Principles. I'll provide the people of this city with a daily paper that will tell all the news honestly. I will also provide That's the second them... sentence you've started with I. People are going to know who's responsible. And they're going to get the truth in the inquirer quickly and simply and entertainingly, and no special interests are going to be allowed to interfere with that truth. I'll also provide them with a fighting and tireless champion of their rights as citizens and as human beings. Signed. Kane's own principles destroyed. What's that? Declaration of principles. I never wanted to in the first place! You will continue with your singing, Susan. I don't propose to have myself made ridiculous. You don't propose to have yourself made ridiculous? What about me? I'm the one that's got to do the singing! I'm the one that gets the raspberries! Why don't you let me alone? Kane's own principles, published in the papers, destroyed. Kurtz's pamphlets ended with exterminate the brutes. They turned back on their own principles, their own values lost in the darkness. Their ideal worlds crumbled beneath the reality that they could never have what they truly wanted, acceptance. Neither had a deliberate belief about love, and all hope was replaced with utter darkness.